Hello everybody, I'm going to help you out here going through the uh, circuit analysis handout for Science 30. Uh, what we're doing here is taking a look at what an electron would be doing if it was to go around a circuit like this. And uh, we're going to take a look at some of the um, changes in voltage and current in the circuit as we move around through a series and a parallel circuit. Uh, afterwards, there's a couple of problems that I'll probably tackle in a different video. You can watch that if you need some help with those. So here we've got a series circuit. How do you know it's series? Well, these two resistors here are right next to each other. Uh, there's only one pathway for the electrons to go uh, through this circuit and through both those resistors. They kind of don't have a choice as to where to go. That's what makes this a series circuit. So let's take a look at what's happening here. First of all, it says that in a series circuit, this is really important, this is what you want to remember, current's the same everywhere. That, mean at every, that means at every resistance, the current, or every resistor, the current's going to be the same. The voltage changes depending on which resistor you're going through. All right, let's see what this means. Um, electrons coming from the battery pass through point one, right here. Let's draw a little electron in. What's the voltage of the electrons here? It's going to be 25 volts. The reason for that, those electrons haven't gone through a resistor that has taken away any of their energy yet. And the current in the uh, circuit here is going to be 5 amps. The reason for that, there isn't any other position for the electrons to go through. There isn't like a fork in the road. Current is kind of like the number of electrons passing at any point. And they all have to kind of go through point one. They don't have any choice. So the current resistance and the voltage hasn't changed from the battery. As they go through point two, they're going to meet a resistor, and that resistor is going to make those electrons give up a little bit of their energy. So the current in the resistor here is still going to be 5 amps, because the number of electrons going through the resistor is the same as the number coming out of the battery here. But to figure out how much voltage that resistor is going to take from the electrons, we're going to do a little calculation. We're going to do a little Ohm's Law V equals IR calculation. And it's pretty easy to do. We're just going to take the current, that's 5 amps, and we're going to multiply it by the resistance, which is 2 ohms. This is um, the symbol for ohm. That's the Greek symbol omega. And uh, kind of a weird one. 10 volts is the voltage that we're going to see uh, that first resistor taking. So that first resistor takes 10 volts of energy uh, away from the electrons. So now we're going to take a look at part C, which is when we're going to go through the uh, spot in between the 2 and the 3 ohm resistor. And in that spot there, we're still going to have the same amount of current as before, right? Because again, the electrons haven't gotten any choice as to where to go. They're still kind of stuck on that pathway. But the voltage of the electrons is going to change. Those electrons came in with 25 volts from the battery. And now they lost 10 volts as they went through the battery. So that means they're going to have 15 volts of voltage, kind of like energy per unit of charge, energy per electron left over. So 15 volts all left over once that's said and done. What about at point 4? Well, here at point 4 we have another resistor, and it's a 3 ohm resistor. The electrons going through this little resistor are going to experience a voltage drop again. Now the current hasn't changed, keeping in mind current's always the same in a series uh, circuit, but I can figure out what the voltage drop is. So it's going to be 5 amps of current times 3 ohms of resistance, so that's a voltage drop of 15 volts. Alright, so that means that we're going to lose the last 15 volts of energy or potential difference as we go through uh, that last resistor. So the voltage at point 5 as they come out of the resistor is zero. Now all of the energy per unit of charge of those electrons is gone, but the current is still 5 amps. That's a series circuit. Let's take a look at a parallel circuit here. How do we know this one is parallel? Take a look at the resistors now. Those resistors are kind of next to each other as opposed to um, kind of being connected end to end. And maybe more importantly is the electrons have a choice. When they're going through the circuit, they can go one way or another way. There's sort of a, a juncture or a, a fork in the road. So let's take a look at what's happening with this circuit. The electrons again come out of the battery at position 1. And at position 1, they have a voltage of 25 volts. And here I've got a current of 18.75 amps. 
Now, the thing to keep in mind when we get into a parallel circuit is the voltage is going to be the same everywhere, but the current is going to change as we go from one spot to another. I'll show you how that works. So let's say the uh, some of the electrons are going to go through this pathway here. Some of them are going to choose to go down the 2 ohm resistor. What voltage would be there? Well, 25 volts. 25 volts is the amount of energy uh, per unit of charge each of the electrons have at this point on the circuit. So the electrons who choose to come down this way, they still have 25 volts of kind of energy per unit of charge as well. And the ones that go this way also have 25 volts of energy per unit of charge. They have the same amount of energy. The voltage is the same everywhere in the circuit. Now let's figure out what the current is in this position uh, here at resistor 2. So I'm going to do another Ohm's law calculation. V equals IR. The voltage is 25 volts. And I'm going to calculate the current by substituting in 2 ohms of resistance. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2 here, and the current is going to be 12.5 volts. Pardon me, 12.5 amps for the current. So that means 12.5 of the original 18.75 amps of current, 12.5 amps chose to go down that first pathway through the resistor that was a 2 ohm resistor. Let's think about the electrons that chose to go down through the pathway through the 4 ohm resistor. The voltage here is still 25 volts, that hasn't changed any. But the current, now this is interesting, if you had 18.75 amps originally coming out of the battery, kind of like the number of electrons, roughly, uh, coming out of the battery, and out of that 18.75, 12.5 chose to go down through the first branch, that means whatever is left over, in this case that's going to be 6.25, has to go down through this branch. So that means through the next resistor, there's 6.25 amps. So that the total current is the same. It's a conservation law. It's called the law of conservation of charge, but that's the idea that's going on there. So the, the current in the circuit at that uh, second resistor is uh, 6.25 amps. Point 0.4 is when we're coming right back into the battery again. So the total current here adds up to 18.75 again. We've got the 6.25 from the uh, 4 ohm resistor being added to the 12.5 uh, from that 2 ohm resistor and altogether adding up to give 18.75 amps. Now, how much voltage does the resistor take from the electrons? We can do another calculation here. So we're going to do a V equals IR calculation. How much voltage does the resistor take from the electrons? So we're going to do a little calculation here, another Ohm's law calculation, V equals IR. We've got the voltage equals the current. Now I'm going to use the overall current in the circuit here. So that's 18.75 amps. And I'm going to put in the resistance. Now there's a problem here. We don't know what the resistance is of the whole circuit. We know what the resistance is of the first resistor and of the second resistor, but what's the total of those? So we have a formula for figuring this out. What we can do here is we can use the total resistance formula, which is found in your data booklet. If you have resistors in series, the total resistance is very easy. The total resistance is just what you get when you add together the little individual resistors um, resistances, just total it up. But if it's in parallel, we have to add the reciprocals, and what we end up with is the reciprocal of the total resistance. Uh, and, and a great way of doing this is to use the X to the negative one button key on your calculator. So we're gonna take a look at a few of those examples when we uh, work through in the next video, the uh, questions that you'll find in the next couple of problems. So check out the next video to see an explanation of that.